welcome to Supernatural Life. My name is Patricia King and I serve as your host for this program. And today we're going to be covering a topic called Prophetic Secrets. And it is the title of Jennifer Evaz's brand new book. And Jennifer, you are an apostle, an apostolic leader out in California. You've got an amazing church, but you're also very, very prophetic, a prophet, and you have written many books. So we are so excited to have you on the program today. Thank you, I'm so glad to be here. So when I was looking at the cover, I thought prophetic secrets, okay, what is what is this about? What is that mean the secret so what prompted you actually to write the book well I've been teaching the prophetic um, from A to Z for several years and um, you know I I guess it was really much just a very natural part of my life and then one day as I was uh, training one of my online mentoring groups James Gall just happened to be one of my guests and he began to prophesy that I was going to um, be a leading trainer in, in the prophetic, which was very, it was very outstanding to me. And so um, my, my publisher just happened to catch that word. She says, you need to write a book out of what Prophet James just said. And I said, okay. And so this book is actually uh, the result of a prophetic word and where I wanted to give all the the nuts and bolts of what I have been teaching in, I would say, small bites for years now and really make things that seem like they're out of touch, out of reach, a, right. a secret to people and actually make it reachable from the simplistic right. to the very um, multidimensional type of prophetic word, the right. different ways God speaks. Because there's so much... Um apprehension in the body and many believers, yeah. um, if, especially if they haven't had training. And if you haven't, I just want to encourage you to get this book because it'll give you a great start. But, um, you know, they think, well, I don't know if I could be spiritual like that. I don't know if I could hear God on that level. I don't know. Maybe it's just for, you know, special people, but it's for the whole body. We're all to be prophetic people. And so that's where you excel is being able to make that simple for people to understand and bring it down in a way that they can comprehend and activate it as well. Right, and it, it really is, it, it takes um, uh, simple impressions. What do I do with that? And then it also deals with the complex. You know, there's that group of people that they're hearing the Lord in very unusual ways, and they don't have anything that uh, structurally tells them what to do with that difficult word. So the simple, how to get activated, all the way to the complex. I That's think it's awesome. gonna hit all of those areas. That's awesome. Now, you are very uh, fluent in the prophetic and, and in the revelatory realm. How did that come about in your life? Well, when I became a Christian, um, you know, I, I was already very supernatural, you know. So then I became a Christian. I actually got the Holy Spirit. And it was just like the, the prophetic was there. Um, and it was, it was uh, manifesting in I would know things, but I didn't know how I knew it. I would think I had a conversation with you and I never had that conversation with you. And I would start out um, communication with you from a place of knowing that I didn't, it's like, I didn't realize what was going on. It was getting me in trouble at first until people said, oh, you're prophetic. And I said, okay, you know, so I began to realize that I'm hearing God, Right. but, but okay, so you hear God, but how do I communicate sure. it? Sure. What do I communicate? What do I release and what do I hold back? Those are the things I had to all learn right. how to do by trial and error. There wasn't the teaching like we have now. Okay, so you didn't have anyone to teach you and you had no mentor. You just had to pave the way. <laughs> where, and, where I was from, yeah. yes. It was, it was very much me trying to figure it out with the Holy Spirit, much like a lot of things at that time. We didn't, we didn't have words like, feeler, he, uh, um, feeler, seer, you know, hear, you know, we didn't have those terms to differentiate sure. the different ways God was speaking. Right. And so one of the things the Holy Spirit took me through as a training, personalized training from the Spirit of God, he would ask me this question early on as a Christian, and he would say, what do you see? Not what I saw naturally, but what did I see spiritually? And then he would say, what do you know? And that's why I began to draw out uh, from him the knowing, the information. Sure. Um, and so he trained me that way for a long time. And then I realized it was real. Right. I was actually hearing God and I was actually speaking for him and pretty much with, with a lot of trial sure. and error, um, speaking his heart. And then I learned in the Bible, that's how he trained the other prophets. Wow. What do you see? 
So, so would he tell you that when you were in a meeting or something or a prayer time? Um, when did he speak that to you? It was day after day after day. It was like this ongoing exercise that he was taking me through. And I would hear him several times a day. He would say, what do you see? And I just, a person would be highlighted in front of me. Right. And initially, I didn't know really what was going on. I just knew he was asking me questions. And I would just respond. Right. And then I didn't realize till you know, a few years into that, that I was actually going to minister out of that. And I did. Right. It was mostly intercession at first. Mm -hmm. Then it became a verbal, a verbalization wow. of what he was saying. I think that's so good for a lot of you that are watching the program right now. A great, um, a great place to start is just allow the Holy Spirit to prompt you with, you know, what do you see? What do you know? What is it that you're in touch with by the Spirit of God? And that'll awaken, help to awaken some of your prophetic senses and help you grow a little bit. That's great. So. Okay, so you were massaging this prophetic anointing. You're learning about, I'm sure yeah. that you found books in that as well, did you? Uh, initially, I didn't find books that were, were as um, uh, in depth as uh -huh. I needed, a, needed right. them to be because I was feeling as well. I was sure. highly sensory. I was seeing in the spiritual realm. A lot of the prophetic books back then were just about hearing God. Right. And so they didn't have the dimensions that I was operating right. in. I'm sure it was out there somewhere. It just right. wasn't where I had access or right. knew where to go. And your book, Prophetic Secrets, it talks about all those realms it of does. the prophetic. So that's really neat because a lot of you will relate to different ways that you're receiving from the Holy Spirit and your own realms of sensitivity. So it'll help you in whatever realm, but also help you to know um, what other people are experiencing in that. So it gives you a nice big picture of that. There's a lot That's of different great. stories uh, and a lot of different ways that God is speaking to people. And then if you don't think that God is even speaking to you at all, I'm going to show you in this book how to get activated in hearing God's voice using the scriptures. Right. So anchoring. And yes, so safe. absolutely. So Very safe. safe and so powerful because yeah. it's 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 um, established in the heavens for right. eternity. Right. It's right. amazing. OK, so you were a prophetic person, uh, but there's a difference from being prophetic and being a prophet. So can you Definitely. explain to us what the difference is? Well, you know, as many people have been saying, you can prophesy, but just because you prophesy doesn't make you a prophet. And the gift of prophecy is so accessible. And so it makes sense that not everybody would be a prophet or we would be, everybody would be a prophet. Right. So really it's uh, a prophet is somebody called by Jesus uh, as one of the fivefold uh, ministers, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, mm -hmm. evangelist, Ephesians 4. Gift of prophecy comes from the Holy Spirit, uh, which is interesting. And everyone can prophesy if mm -hmm. you're a believer in Jesus. So as a prophet, it's a governing role. You're given a metron, which means a spirit of authority, a mm -hmm. God-designed spirit of authority. And in that spirit of authority, you're going to hear the Lord um, times and seasons. You're going to hear what's next. You're going to appoint leaders. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to uh, prophetically intercede. You're going to know uh, you're going to be you're going to be God's warning system. Right. And it's, it's really it's very governmental. It's at a whole nother level than perhaps the ordinary prophetic person. Right. It, it's very different. And we see that in Ephesians 4, and you can look that up in your Bible, and it gives you the list of all the fivefold ministry gifts. And one of the things that points out there is that it's for the equipping of the saints for the work yes. of the ministry. So not only do prophets prophesy, because of right. course, right. you know, that would be a primary role, but they're also used in equipping the body to be prophetic too. Yeah, and that's so that, passion, yes. Yeah, so that all God's people will become prophetic. Right. You know, like when you've got a prophet doing their work, then everyone in that realm that they're they're overseeing will be able to prophesy. Right. And it says until we all come into the full measure of the stature of Christ. Right. So right. it's like that's the goal is to become like Jesus. So, yes. Yes. yeah. <laughs> so um, how did you come to know that you were a prophet? I had a vision. And it started in a vision. Um, I, I really didn't aspire to be a prophet. I came out of the Mormon church. Prophets were very, very limited and they were male. 
<laughs> you know, right. it was one prophet. And so that was my paradigm. Right. Uh, even though, you know, I became a Christian, I believed the Bible, I just didn't understand it. And I just had, I came from that paradigm. So next thing you know, I'm already in ministry alongside my husband at a conference. Um, it's an angel came in that conference and it was like, you know, the whole world went away. It was mm. a trance. And this angel came with this, this big scroll and there's writing on the scroll that I couldn't read. And I knew intuitively that I needed to sign my name to the scroll. It was right. about 10 feet, 10 feet uh, high, you know, four feet wide, something like that. And it, I knew intuitively to sign it. I knew intuitively I was signing on to be a prophet to the nations, all intuitive. And so I did that in the vision. And when I came out of the vision, I somehow ended up on the floor and my friend who was also ministering in her French accent, accent, she's shouting at the top of her lungs, you're a prophet to the nations, you're a prophet of God. <laughs> and so wow. it was kind of oh, right there. God, so awesome. But, you know, you're, you're called, but then there's the processing that sure. happens immediately after. So definitely a different anointing came on me, extraordinary adventures in God, extraordinary warfare. I just began going through the process, not even really being recognized right. until years later, yeah. and a lot under my belt by then. Because a prophet's primary position is in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Right, and that's very important. Yes. <laughs> uh, because otherwise the gifting can just put you out there, but it's it, it's gotta come from the presence of the Lord. So yeah. this is exciting, isn't it? And you know, you're probably thinking, hmm, am I prophetic? Am I a prophet? Uh, who am I? What am I? What can I do? What do I have access to? And we're gonna talk more about that when we come back from this break. <laughs> 